It is five o'clock and we are still live streaming from Neuhausen, Germany. Our last speaker of today is Edgar Melzner. Edgar's session will be about precision sensing in life science. If you have any questions for Edgar during his presentation, please feel free to write them in the chat. We will answer them at the end. Welcome, Edgar. Thank you very much for uh, this friendly introduction. My session is Precision Sensing in Life Science. Well, application of sensors in life science is a vast field, ways too big to cover it comprehensively in a 15 minutes presentation. With Balof being a global provider of sensor and particularly um, automation equipment, I'm focusing here on laboratory automation. And I've chosen three representative examples which should demonstrate the technical capabilities of Balof products. Just an additional comment here. In my function as head of business development, I'm also responsible for the optical competence center of Balof in Munich, Germany. And for that reason, the example I've chosen here are all related to optics. So the first group of applications, the first example here under is the detection of the presence and to a certain extent, also the condition of liquids as they appear, for example, during sample preparation or reagent dispensing. Generally, there is two physical principles that can be used for optical detection. And in this case, I presuppose here a clear tube or a clear hose, because otherwise, optical solution would not really make sense. So the two physical principles that can be used is either attenuation, where the liquid is weakening or even blocking the light path, or refraction, where the beam is deflected. As long as dimensions are big or liquids are opaque, like for example blood, this is rather easy. Attenuation is the first choice because you simply have to compare two different transmission values. This can even work in the case of a clear liquid liquid that appears to be transparent in the visible range, but by making use of a wavelength dependency of, of the transmission, we could probably use a wavelength that makes it visible. To give you an example, we're doing this with water or with aqueous liquids by using a wavelength in the infrared where compared to the visible range, water has an absorption maximum. And this way, attenuation is still an easy task. If you do have a liquid that's not water uh, and you would like to go with attenuation, it's always worth looking into the spectral behavior of the liquid. Maybe we can find such an absorption maximum and apply attenuation this way. If all that is not applicable, well, refraction is the only way out. Refraction is generally a bit more demanding than attenuation and especially if the dimensions of the tubes or the hoses get small, the beam quality of the sensor has to be extremely high. And with a trend that we're seeing towards miniaturization in analytical equipment, we see a continuous increase on the precision side of optical sensing. And this is where the unique technology of Balof STM comes into the game. What that means in technical details I will cover that a uh, little bit later. But let me start with some practical cases to show you what that means. Our precision standard tube sensors. Balof is producing a whole family of miniaturized high precision tube sensors. They either work on attenuation or on refraction, whatever provides the better signal. The family starts in terms of tube sizes with 6.4 millimeter, and that's really the big part. That's the upper end, and it goes down to 1.6 millimeters. All the optical precision is built into that sensor. It's a clip-in solution. So the beam shaping, the alignment of beam and tube inside is completely incorporated into the sensor. You don't have to care, to care about that. You simply clip in your tube and you're done. For that reason, 
all their sensors are designed for one specific tube diameter. So if you should have a tube size that differs from what we offer as a standard, no worries. Customization to exactly your tube dimension is no big deal. The second case I've chosen here is sample preparation and dispensing of reagents, which is commonly done via pipettes. If you need to dispense an exact volume, the precision in that hole detection is crucial. So pipettes are typically disposable parts. That means their exact position and the exact dimensions are subject to tolerances. So if you need to control the liquid level down to the lowest end of the tip, including uh, the respecting of the tolerances, this is where the challenge really gets extreme. And the only way to achieve reliable readings is if the beam diameter is smaller than the pipette diameter in the position where you're taking the reading, especially if you have to um, respect a distance between emitter and receiver just to avoid contamination during the dispensing process. This is where extreme precision is required. So this is what we mean if we talk about precision sensing in life science. But in terms of precision, this can even go further. The most challenging of all is microfluidic lab chips. In order to save reagent and reaction time, we see an increasing importance of a technology that is called lab on a chip. In these lab chips, the liquid transportation is provided by capillary forces in micro channels of 300 to 400 microns. So rather than using pumps and tubes, the volume is reduced to extremely small size. And what that means in terms of object size and object resolution for liquid presence detection, um, this lab chip will give you sort of an idea. There is 25 of such microchannels routed across that chip. Can you see them? Probably not, because the array is too small that the camera can catch them. That's no problem, because our sensors can. If we take a through beam sensor of the Balov Micromote sensor family, micro optical sensor heads with a size like this of two millimeter external diameter. An LED integrated into that sensor head emits a beam size of 400 microns diameter. And that is exactly in the range of the micro channels. So this is what we mean if we're talking about sensing precision. If you have an application like that, a sensor like this is a hot candidate for it. Let's switch to a completely different field now with the profane name pill counting, and this is my second example. For many years, Balof is producing so-called optical windows for all kinds of applications in packaging industry. These are basically square mechanical frames with an optical field inside with a high uniformity and a high sensitivity to detect parts that are passing that window. The object resolution of such a frame sensor of this size is typically in the range of a tenth of a millimeter, 100 microns, which is the size of a sugar grain. So every object that's passing the window, completely independent of the position where it falls, is reliably detected. So if we're talking about life science and pill detection, it's just a different kind of object, right? So where's the difference? Well, there is two particular challenges if we're talking about pill counting. The first one is unusual optical behavior. 
if you have translucent capsules with an elongated shape, like this one, especially if they are run through a frame that has been adjusted and used for small size pills before, and if they are tumbling and falling, their optical behavior can be so strange that it leads to miscounts. It makes a big difference if the part falls along its axis or perpendicularly to it. Imagine if it's falling this way, there is a leading edge which is dark, a middle part which is transparent is probably not seen, and then a trailing edge which is again tar dark, and that can easily be taken for a double count. So what's the solution? The electronics built into that sensor simply have different modes, including transparent object detection. So the correct choice of the right electronic parameters is the way out. The second challenge is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Many pills tend to generate dust during the processing and handling. This dust may build up on the lenses of the optical window, which over time leads to a gradual signal reduction. This may happen slowly, but with certain dusty pills, this may happen within hours. The built-in electronics have an automatic dust compensation. So that means the sensor detects the gradual loss of signal level and compensates step by step by increasing the sensitivity of the optical window inside and keeping the detection on the same level. So these layers may build up over time in a way that the sensor finally turns blind or could turn blind. Well, the electronics are smart enough to recognize such a change and to trigger an alarm output, which, by the way, can be adjusted in terms of its sensitivity. We consider that a built-in optical condition monitoring. Due to their internal modular design, these sensors can easily be adapted and customized to different sizes and dimensions, like it's depicted on the left side here, to integrate perfectly into your instrument. A general answer how much of an engineering effort is required for such an adaptation is not possible. So that could probably lead to a project, but we would need to look at the individual conditions and need to talk about that. My example, application example number three, and with this we somehow return a little bit to the first example that I had showed you with liquid presence and our tube sensors. But in this case here, it's bubble detection, which is another typical application in life science. Bubble detection means that you have to differentiate in terms of the size of the bubble between a macro bubble, which is filling the complete inner diameter, and a micro bubble, which is simply smaller than the inner diameter. So if you have to dispense liquid with a very high accuracy, entrapped air bubbles finally mean a deviation in the dispensed volume. So you need to detect bubbles if they appear and need to determine how big they are. So this first case with a macro bubble is relatively simple because it's just the inversion of the liquid presence detection that I've showed you in my initial example. There is always a clear differentiation between liquid and air, and there is one even plane that differentiates the two refraction indexes. So the tube sensors, the highly precision tube sensors from example number one can be applied for this kind of application just inverted. Microbubbles is completely different, ways more sophisticated because the bubbles can get so small that they are somehow distributed over the liquid column and their precision to the axis is random. In such cases, which may tell you something about the condition of your liquid, normal tube sensors usually fail. The specific microbubble sensors of Balov reliably catch such microbubbles 
due to their unique and patented design. So if you have such a case, let's talk. So why can't we do what others can't? Well, the answer is this little component here. This is a high precision micro LED with an accurate beam shaping built according to the Balif STM microspot technology. This enables us to build LEDs way smaller and more accurate uh, than our competitors can. The only part that we are not producing ourselves inside this component is the semiconductor chip. Everything else is in our control. Every wavelength available on the world market can be built into such a component at reasonable quantities. And this finally brings me to an additional aspect which strikingly underlines the unique capabilities of Balof STM. If you just take the emitting part of such a sensor, the high precision LED with its tiny dimensions and recall that every wavelength available, say starting from 400 nanometers up to 1500 nanometers can easily be incorporated into our production process. That will lead automatically to the conclusion that these components can be used as an illumination source for fluorescence excitation, a measurement principle that is used in many biochemical detection processes. Two arguments. The first one is the optical beam shaping. We can adapt the beam opening angle in a way that it's perfectly illuminating your reaction target. And the second argument is we can select the illumination and wavelength exactly to the requirements of your reaction. To our knowledge, there is no other sensor manufacturer in the world with comparable capabilities. So if you have an application you could not yet find a suitable solution for, due to one of the challenges I have just mentioned here, you should not hesitate to contact us. We can probably help. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Edgar, for this interesting presentation. So let's gonna have a look if there is some question in our chat and I already see that there is one appearing. It's probably gonna take a while. So I have another question yeah. um, for you. You said about the pill counting. Um, what if there are two objects passing the window at the same time? At the same time. Well, this is really a problem because it's a two-dimensional uh, optical window and the window cannot differentiate between one or two objects falling at a time. So one precondition is that the parts fall separated, which is usually easily to be achieved in a dispensing process, transportation and dispensing process. Okay, so the question from the chat, are there any limitations concerning the liquids? For example, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. peroxide. Well, if there are limitations, they probably come more from the tube than from the sensor itself. Uh, of course, like I had mentioned before, we would need to look into the optical behavior of that liquid and then decide if we need to go with attenuation or if we can go with attenuation, which is the easier case, or if we need to go with refraction, which uh, requires a little more, bit more internal precision. But again, the complete optical alignment is built into the sensor. So if you have an application with hydrogen peroxide, we would provide you and pre-select a sensor that would do the job. What happens if threading of a tube, um, in threading of the tube into the sensor is not possible? Um, is there also um, a clip inversion for the micro bubble? Well, this is a question that we hear quite often. The main reason why this sensor has a closed design is that. If, we're, if we want to track really micro bubbles, it's not enough to shoot with one single high precision beam through the tube. We have a complete field that illuminates the inner diameter of the tube, and that requires a field of individual beams. So for that reason, it's enclosing the whole tube. But of course, there is clip inversions which have sort of a gap and kind of a U shape. There is some loss in the detection capabilities, but that's neglectable. The 
sensor versions with the gap did not yet make it into the catalog. So the catalog just shows the enclosed version, but if you have such an application, just talk to our sales engineers and we'll provide something that will fit. Okay, thank you, Edgar, for these amazing insights. Thank you very much. And thank you all for listening. Thank you for joining us at our first day from our virtual event. I hope you will have a great day, a great evening, depending on where you are. And hopefully I can welcome you again tomorrow morning at 8.30 for our first session of our second day. Stay safe and healthy and hopefully see you tomorrow. Thank you.